English translation, third contact. Saturday, 8th of February, 1975, 03, 03 HRs. You have completed your book. It is a magnificent work. Even though it is written somewhat harshly, it nevertheless has the right tone to make the sense understandable. You simply could not write it any differently. I think so too. But I have concerns that someone will reject it from me. Your concerns are unfounded because the human beings will become attentive and your work will be put to print. Hopefully, I would at least be glad about that. But at the moment, I am also interested in something other than my book. Then ask? Since our last meeting, I have occupied myself intensively and much with the so-called UFO literature. In doing so, I came across the suggestion that you human beings from the stars, if I may put it that way, are always described as supernatural, supernatural beautiful and as protectors of humanity on Earth, almost as all-knowing and as teachers, etc., and that you should therefore live practically in spiritual and conscious perfection. But my intellect and my impression convey something completely different to me in this respect, and I cannot get over the fact that all this can only be lies. Lies that probably originate from sick brains, or from brains that are not free and brand fantasy pictures as reality, because the originators of thoughts cannot cope with real reality, and therefore escape into a fantastic pseudo-world. The reality seems to be too hard for them, so they flee into fantasies because they hope for help in these. And since these human beings never want to bear the responsibility for anything and everything themselves, because they are perhaps too unknowing or too cowardly, they simply pass it on to something that is supposed to stand above them and direct their destinies. They then call this something God and religion. A simple buffer and ram block into which one can pound everything. A fantasy picture onto which one rolls all one's own responsibility. You are preoccupied with very deep thoughts, and they correspond to the absolute truth. It is really, as you say, the Earth humans are not able to bear and recognize their responsibility themselves, although they should do so. So they roll everything off and onto something that they put above themselves in their imagination, things that they simply call religion or God that are supposed to relieve them of the responsibility. If deceivers label and describe us as you said just now, it is nothing more than an infamous lie, originating from the brains of consciously poor human beings who imagine a better life in their fantasy, and because they themselves cannot achieve it, at least not yet in this life, they simply attribute it to us and make us out to be something perfect. But we, too, are still far away from this stage and must continually develop ourselves further. We are not the so-called above-human or superhuman beings, as the Earth humans like to call us in their unknowledge and in their imaginations. We are also no teachers, missionaries, or pioneers. We only have the dutiful task of preserving the developing as well as already existing human life throughout the cosmic space. This means that we strive to keep order and watch over certain life. Here and there we approach the inhabitants of different worlds. If our directives allow us to do so, choose individuals from among them and provide them with explanations. This, however, only then when a race develops higher and slowly becomes thinking. We then slowly prepare them for the need to become familiar with the thought of not being the only thinking beings in the universe. Here and there, we also help on a telepathic basis to let certain cognitions germinate and to make technical inventions which are necessary at that time. Why then do you not appear en masse and show yourselves to the general public? And why do you not get in touch with the most diverse governments? Without exception, all governments on Earth are staffed by human beings who have the characteristic of addiction to might and profit. Under the guise of peace and friendship, they would only want to seize our beamships to be able to exercise absolute Gewalt rule over the Earth with them. But they would also try to conquer the outer space because they know no bounds. 
However, they are not even able to, on the earth, create peace and friendship between the countries, not even among the human beings in their own country. How, then, should they be able to have such means of might at their disposal, such as are our beam ships and their multifaceted facilities represent it? There is no interest in showing ourselves to the general public. Their consciousness is still short and small and confined in religious enslavement. On the one hand, the earth humans would worship us as gods in their short reflection, as they did already in earlier times, and on the other hand, there would be many among them who as criminals and greedy for might ones would seize our beam ships. But there are also those who are not to be forgotten, and there are countless millions of them who would fall into complete hysteria and fall ill in consciousness. For these reasons, it is advisable for the time being to maintain contact only with individual earth humans and to via them slowly let the knowledge of our existence and tasks become known and to prepare them for what is to come. We are no wardens or guardians of the earth humans. We only feel obliged to them because our originators were their ancestors, before they fled from the earth as a result of self-inflicted catastrophes of some might-greedy ones and escaped to the Pleiades. By a hair's breadth, just as you have in the last decades deduced and calculated this according to all your knowledge. Only a few facts turned out somewhat differently than you had suspected. By and large, however, you have hit the heart and the bulk of history and were the first human being to find the corresponding truth. My calculations are correct, then. Of course, but about that, I will report to you in detail at a later point in time. Even about a manual? Sure, you are to receive information about Atlantis and Mu, though concerning a manual you already have knowledge. You know the script of Judas Ishariath, which fully corresponds to the truth. So I do not have to explain anything else about that. But I would still be interested in one thing, Simya say. It has often been written that the human beings from the stars would become very old, millions of years even. What is up with that? Do you believe these claims? No, because it sounds too unlikely. I can only believe it when I look at it in the way that a human being of about 70,000 million years of age is no longer a human being, but some kind of spiritual embodiment. You are right about that, too. A human being is capable of living for several hundred, or even thousands of years when it has attained a certain spiritual and consciousness-based relative state of perfection and a correspondingly high and healthy mode of life. But after this stage of about 40 to 60 million years, the spirit no longer needs a purely material body, and it becomes a half-spirit body. It then lives only half materially for another 60 to 80 million years, and in such high spheres that one can no longer get in contact with it from the purely material human vantage point, unless there is a very high level of consciousness-based and spiritual evolution. After 60 to 80 million years, then, the half-spirit, that is to say half-material form, transforms into the first pure-spirit form and enters the level of Arahat Atharsata. Nice, but may I direct one more question to you, or even two? Just ask. You are surely aware that our dear little women on Earth keep their age a secret, and that they smear their lips, face, finger, and toenails with powder and colors. What do you think about that? Indisputably. They lie to themselves through their actions. Personally, I find makeup disgusting, but also all forms of painting the body as well as fingernails and toenails. I think so too. But how is it with all of you? Do you also live in this delusion? Definitely not. Good. Then may I also ask you how old you actually are? Certainly, but what do you assume? I have no experience in assessing human beings of your kind. But if I reckon according to my standards, then you would be about 32 or 33 years old. You understand that field of yours, 
because that is how old I would really be according to earthly notions, based on my appearance. You do not know, however, that the average lifetime with us is very high, and amounts to several hundreds of years, that is, about one thousand years. So I'm still very young and only three hundred thirty years old, which corresponds approximately to your thirty-three years by your understanding. What does my understanding mean here? If you had told me your average age beforehand, then I also would have assessed you differently. How could I know that? Because I also do not know everything. It is all right. It was really my mistake. But now I must go again, and so farewell.